Hello, my name is Eric Almeida. I'm responsible for Serve Sales in Canada. And today we're going to have the opportunity to, to speak uh, about uh, the pre and post gear process and the inliner everything process of uh, Gear Dairy Robot R9500. R- and for this purpose, we invited Jerome Boyer. Uh, he, who is the sales specialist for Gear Automatic uh, Milking Systems in Canada. Welcome, Jerome. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I, as Eric said, my name is Jerome Boyer, and I'm the sales specialist for AMS in Canada. I've been with the company, uh, Gear company, for the last 13 years, but I've been specialized on robotics for the last 11 years. So it's a pleasure to be here today and answer your question about uh, the post-dip and pre-dip and inliner everything process of the Gear robot. We know that GIA has a unique, a unique way to uh, simulate milk pre and post uh, cows. So, can you tell us a little bit more about the inliner everything process? Yeah, the inliner everything process is pretty unique on the market. Uh, basically, the way it works is the cow will be identified when she gets into the box, and then the software, dairy plan software, the, the herd management software, will send all the information about that cow to the system. So we know if it's a 3T cow or if it's a treated cow or colostrum cow or anything like that. So the way it's going to work, the unit's going to move to the other and then we're going to start the attachment with T number one. As, as soon as this T is attached, then we're going to start the stimulation with the help of our stimulus system. And then at the same time, we're going to start the cleaning of this T. So because we want to create a turbulence inside the liner to clean it better. After that, we're going to do the pre-milk uh, portion of the, of the milking. And then after the pre-milking, we have the normal milking. And then after that, we uh, we go with the post dip at the end of the milking. And then that's pretty much the inliner everything process. We should uh, learn a little bit more or dig a little bit more uh, into the teeth preparation. So how does it work on a Gia Dear Robot R9500? Well, basically the, the tea process or the tea cleaning process is pretty uh, pretty simple. We start with uh, with cleaning the teeth uh, with water, and then we're gonna use uh, we're gonna use an antiseptic solution uh, that we're gonna tell a little bit more about in in the near future. Um, well, uh, with this uh, antiseptic solution, we're gonna clean the teeth and make sure there's no uh, there's no residue and the teeth is perfectly clean before milking. When it's done. Uh, when we're done with the antiseptic solution, there's a soaking period. And then after that, a flush of air to remove any residue or anything in the line and make sure that the teeth is ready and dry for the milking. GIA uh, uh, recommends using approved antiseptics, uh, antiseptic solutions, and uh, then we rinse uh, the teeth and then we blow air to dry the teeth. Is that uh, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's the way it works for sure. An approved antiseptic solution is a recommendation or, I mean, it's a regulation in Canada in most provinces. So we have to use uh, a DIN approved product for the process. Um, and then after that, you're absolutely right. We're using a soaking period just to make sure the product uh, is activated and, and do its job. And then after that, we're going to use a flush of air just to make sure there's no, no uh, residue left and also that the, the teeth is really dry and ready for the milking. Okay. So moving ahead in the milking process, uh, how do we make sure that the liners were disinfected after uh, milking a problem? Well, it's easy. On, on our uh, Gia Dairy Robot R9500, there's a back flush solution that we use with peroxysan uh, chemical. And uh, this process is when the cluster goes back uh, to the CIP position. There's three nozzle outside of the liner that's going to spray the, the outside of the liner to make sure we clean it as much as possible. But there's also a nozzle or what a candle type of nozzle that we use inside the liner to make sure we spray uh, all our back flush solution inside and make sure there's no uh, there's no risk of contamination for the next cow or anything like that. And then after that, again, there's a soaking period and air blow that goes inside the liner. Mm-hmm. So what are the, after this uh, problem cow was milked, what are the procedures after this, this, this step? There, there's two ways to see it. If, if it's a, a colostrum cow or if it's a treated cow, we, we gotta have like what we call a cleaning or a stall cleaning or a stall rinsing. So if, if one of them could be used with the chemical to make sure the box is ready for the next cow and uh, for sure that we clean from the liner to the decision valve for the bad milk side, just to make sure there's no, again, there's no contamination uh, possible or anything like that. 
So it's, it's worth to mention that uh, milking is done by quarter, right? Uh, consequently, there's less extra vacuum being applied to the teeth and healthier teeth. Uh, then, right after milking is finished, can you tell us how post dipping uh, works and how it's applied in the inliner everything process? Yeah, at the end of, of the milking, uh, when per on a per quarter basis, when the threshold is or the detached threshold is achieved, then the quarter will be detached. But just before it's detached, there's an application of a post dip inside the liner. Again, it's really inside the same liner. There's no external uh, system or anything or a spray or anything like that. So the be best application possible. We have the, the end, the, the teeth end covered, and the two thirds of the, 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 the teeth covered also. And those settings could be uh, or should be verified by a certified technician every three months during the maintenance to make sure everything is under control. And, uh, and then after that, you can have the, the best process on the market. Thank you very much, Jerome, for, for all the information. Always a pleasure. And uh, if you have further questions, don't hesitate to contact Eric or Jerome uh, through our uh, emails. Thank you very much.